Right, okay, we're just starting a few minutes, just make sure that everyone's able to see. Okay, great, I think we will get started then. So hello everyone, um, welcome to the latest Business Bookers Presents live stream. I'm Shannon Cook, I'm a writer for Business Bookers, a leading online publisher dedicated to graduate management education. Um, for this special live, I mean, Mike, sorry, I think that is all good. Um, hi, everyone. Um, welcome to the latest Business Bookers Presents live stream. My name is Shannon Cook. I'm a writer for Business Bookers, a leading online publisher ded dedicated to graduate management education. For this special live event, we'll be hearing about the variety of careers you could gain with a master in management. And to discuss this, I'm delighted to say I'll be joined by Sophie Dimitri Louvet, Associate Director of Student Recruitment for Master's Programs at HEC Paris, and Claire Van Peterhem, a 2018 graduate from the HEC Paris MIM, who now works for Google as a digital marketing specialist. Um, in terms of format, today's se session is going to be around 30 minutes. Um, half of our session will be a panel discussion between me, Claire and Sophie about all things related to master in management careers. Then for the remainder of the event, it's going to be over to you as we host a live Q&A session where you can ask any questions you might have about careers, the master in management degree at HEC Paris, how to launch a career in big tech at a major company like Google or anything else that's related to business master's degrees. Um, and also just remember that you can download our free Master in Management Guide 2022, which contains everything you need to know about MIM programs. Um, and you'll find the link to the guide in the event description on whichever platform you're using. Um, if you do have questions, please start asking them now in the comments, um, which are on whichever social platform you're using. Um, but first up, I'd like to welcome our panellists. Uh, thank you both so much for joining me today. Um, just to start off, it would be great if you could just go around and give a quick introduction to yourself. So I think we'll start with you, Sophie. Yeah, hi everyone. It's a pleasure to uh, share more information about the Master in Management and especially the career placement after such a program. Uh, my name is Sophie, as Shannon said, I'm the Director of Student Recruitment for the Master's programs at HEC. Uh, and I've been working at HEC for several years now and I love talking about the programs. So it's a pleasure. Thank you so much, Sophie and Claire. Thank you, Shannon. So hello, everyone. As Shannon mentioned, I currently work at uh, Google. I'm a former student of HCC Paris. I graduated in 2018. I actually went uh, to study twice at HCC. Uh, first as an exchange student uh, from McGill University in 2012, and then as a master in management uh, student in 2015 to 2018. So I'm super happy to be here to discuss about, you know, the careers that you can gain, uh, what's the master in management can help you uh, land a great job at a big tech company or other companies. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for the invite today. Amazing. Thank you, guys. Um, to kick things off, let's hear from you, Sophie. What are the top industries that master in management grads generally enter and what kind of salaries might grads expect across these industries? Mm -hmm. So um, we're noticing a pretty stable trend uh, for our students who are going into consulting, finance and tech in this order. Um, but, you know, around 10 percent of our students do create go on to create their own startups after graduation. Um, we are also no noticing a lot more students going into luxury just because we have very close ties to uh, NVMH and Kering. So uh, really, our objective is to open uh, as many doors as we can for you and then for you to choose uh, the path that fits most what you're looking for. In terms of salary, it really depends on what industry you're going into. But I'd say the most average starting salary is around 55k. Um, but again, it really depends on the on the sector that you're going into. And then it, it what's really important is it escalates quite quickly. So if you're starting at 57k, it can uh, or let's say in the 60K area, you'll be going to 100 within three years. 
So it's it's important to know that that jump happens quite quickly, and that's why the having this master in management degree is an asset. Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, and so how do you think a MIM degree, you said that it's obviously an asset, how do you think having a master in management prepares students for, for these variety of roles? And what kind of skills and qualities do they learn throughout the program? Mm. Uh, well, I think Claire will have a lot more insight than, than me just because she's lived the experience. But I think that our idea is really not just to help you go into whatever industry is of interest to you. It's to really help you become a leader in that industry. So that's why we really focus on leadership skills. What that means is having a nice balance of technical skills and also relational skills. So we really want you to be able to have those wonderful ideas, but then present them with impact because having the great ideas without being able to communicate them, uh, get a team on board to work on them and to develop them uh, won't do you much good. So it's really um, a 360 vision of, of what your career can look like and, and what you need in terms of skill set to become uh, a future business leader. Because really one of the rankings that I'm most proud of as a HEC employee is that we're number three on the alma mater index. So if you take all the top CEOs worldwide, HEC is the number three school represented behind Stanford and Harvard. And that's again, really a demonstration of this leadership that we're looking for in our students. Great. Um, and yeah, so Claire, I'd like to ask you a bit about how did your uh, master in management help you to land a role at, at Google as, as a digital marketing specialist? Um, what kind of skills or qualities did you learn that have helped you to navigate the world of big tech? Yeah, well, definitely. The, the first thing I would like to mention is, first of all, having a master in management from HEC Paris uh, definitely gave me a lot of legitimacy when I actually um, applied to the job. Uh, it actually got me to a higher level than I would have been if I weren't for that master. So it's very important uh, to actually say it out loud because it, it, it gained me about two years of, uh, of work experience within Google, which is not negligible. Um, also, I think that uh, you were very right, Sophie, by saying that um, the master in management is really designed between developing technical skills and also relationship uh, skills. Uh, the fact that we are also working a lot on real life projects, uh, whereas, you know, it, it can be in whether in groups, of, you know, in finance or in accounting and so on, it helps you actually develop skills for the future, how to work in a team, how to take on leadership skills, how to resolve conflicts as well. Sometimes it's important uh, and also take uh, initiatives. It's what's it's actually very important. And at Google, they're all looking, always looking at those skills. And the last one that is very important is the fact that HEC gives you the opportunity to be a part of many student clubs, so to be involved, to have an impact beyond the academical. And that's very important because within Google, you're not only working on your core cool job, you're always working on different projects, whether it is for a 20% project on, uh, I don't know, it can be uh, something humanitarian or something about engineering or developing a, of something else or either a passion. And also they're looking for Googliness. And what's Google Googliness. It's uh, about being um, open-minded, uh, tolerant, and also international mindset. And with HEC, I think that was the campus with the most nationalities I ever had. It also gave us the opportunities to go abroad, uh, whether for an internship or for, um, you know, an exchange at an uh, partner university and all those skills and opportunities that the master in management gives you actually helped me during my application. Great, amazing. Thank you for that insight. I'm sure a lot of our viewers will be interested in knowing about how to get a job at Google. Um, and, and so Sophie, what kind of career guidance does a master's management program such as HEC Paris's master's in management typically offer to students? Yeah, well, I think uh, Claire proves that um, the next point that I'm going to make, which is that one of the unexpected things that I think you'll really find at HEC is the support from the alumni network. Like they're really there to give advice to either offer mentorship or even career opportunities through posting uh, internship roles or even full time job offers on this portal. So I think students receive at least one job offer a day from the alumni network. So that's one point that's really important to emphasize. And then of course we offer up 
plethora of opportunities to develop your skills. So either through CV workshops or interview prep, working on case studies. Then we have, um, and this is also really important for our career services, they place the career events uh, on the strategic timeline, which means that we know companies don't necessarily recruit at the same times. Industries focus um, on earlier recruitment or later recruitment. And so they'll line up those career events with the industry. So usually our finance and consulting fairs come quite early in the in the semester. And then, of course, we have special workshops that are uh, kind of for industries that students are looking to go into and that we might not have a, a big on campus event, but we want to help accompany you in this building of a relationship with the, with the company. So, um, so yeah, we really adapt to our students' needs. I think just even in the pedagogy, uh, if I can give an example, I attended the HEC Foundation event very recently where they talked about entrepreneurship because it's one of our core values at, at HEC. And 15 years ago, students would have to drop out of the program if they wanted to launch their own startups because it just wasn't compatible with a full-time master in management program. And the school just kind of said, you know, we, we want our students to be able to be entrepreneurs. We have to adapt the pedagogy to be able to accompany them. And last year, HEC had 100 startups uh, created across all our programs. And it's just very cool how the school just knows that it has to adapt to the students and what the students need and want. Great, thank you, Sophie. And and so Claire, from your perspective of being a student, um, what kind of career guidance or career skills did you learn that have helped you now in your career? Yeah, so I would say that uh, at HEC, there's always someone, like you mentioned, some mentors, but also the teachers are very present. They're always there. They have an amazing network. Most of them, they are working, you know, for a big industry or they all also have their own companies. So they really guide you, they help you with your network. And the fact that you have so many career events, you create your own networking. So that's very important. And also you mentioned as well, the job um, offers, it's actually very true. The, the first job I got in New York City that then also helped me land uh, Google uh, was posted by a former HEC alumni who had a, is a company headquartered in, in New York City. So you see it, it's about connecting people. It's about making sure that you also should never be afraid Afraid of reaching out to an alumni on LinkedIn or even through the HEC emails because everybody's really helpful. I've got a ton of, of young students who are, you know, messaging me on, on LinkedIn and I'm always trying to help out. And I know that my friends do too, because we've been helped out as well. Sure that we have uh, a strong connection uh, between, you know, the the academical uh, people, the, the students and also like the, the professional um, partners. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great, thank you so much. Um, and then aside from like the, obviously the networking benefits and obviously the, the knowledge and skills that you're building, um, Claire, how do you feel that working in a diverse, like um, tight-knit cohort, how do you think that's helping you to work at like, an international company such as Google? Yeah, well, I think it helps you adapt. It, it also helps you to understand different points of views because sometimes, you know, if you're constantly with the same people who have the same way of thinking as you, it's not very good for innovation or even, you know, it doesn't disrupt, I would say, uh, much um, the ideas or, or the industry. So the fact that you're working with people who sometimes may have been engineers before, I know one of my friends was actually at a music school in Canada uh, and then ended up doing consulting. So you have different backgrounds, different mindsets, so you gain a lot from them and it enables you to create, I would say, um, better projects altogether. And also it, it gives you um, a different perspective on either uh, an academical, I would say, assignment or even if you need to create a, a startup later on, it's good to have different profiles. Um, so I think it's, it's really good. And working at Google, we have people who were in a psychology major. We have some others who were um, sometimes doctors. So we have people from so many different backgrounds and we get to work together uh, toward a common goal. And I think that, you know, HEC is definitely teaching you in a natural way how to behave uh, later on in international and multicultural group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I may add to what Claire said, I think it's 
perfectly stated. It's kind of, uh, she, she touched on the fact that we are talking a lot about diversity these days, um, but it really, when we say diversity, it means diversity of thought. So being in an environment with people who can look at the same problem and see it five different ways, it just kind of helps you build empathy when you're working together with people from either different cultures or different academic backgrounds. Um, and yeah, I think it's uh, something I've also seen on HEC's campus that's important for future careers is how it kind of fosters this sense of collaboration versus competition. And I mean, we're a business school, so you would think that there would be a little bit more of this uh, shark mentality cutthroat um, to get the, the right job, but it's really just the complete opposite. Students work together to make their CVs better, to practice case studies, and it's just really nice to be a part of that environment. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, sorry. Sorry, and I can jump on that, but it, it's very true. When you have the, the period of a consulting cases for BCG, McKinsey and so on, everybody's gathered in a room, everybody's giving each other uh, help. And uh, so it, it's very nice to see that collaboration mm -hmm. prones over competition. Yeah, great. And obviously it's just so important in today's workplace where companies are so interconnected now and um, you're always going to be working alongside people from vastly different backgrounds, cultures than you. So it's really good to have that that practice on, while you're studying. Um, I think we're going to go to the Q and A now. Um, I'm just going to just to remind our audience: just keep asking your questions in the comments, and we can have them answered by Sophie or Claire. Um, I've just a question come in here that asks. Um, this is probably a question for you, Sophie. Um, and they've asked, do I need to have French language skills to come to HEC? Do you support in this area? Uh, so we do support. It's not required. So our master in management is taught fully in English. There is a French language requirement, but it's more for your benefit because even though our recruitment opportunities and career opportunities are all over the world, um, sometimes companies do come from the French office and it's always nice to be able to start off the conversation with a, a bonjour. Um, so we do offer you that support with uh, also the French language summer school before even starting the program. We have the French Academy. So if this is something you're interested in the opportunities are really there but in terms of your academic learning and the career placement afterwards uh, the business world is pretty anglophone Claire will be able to tell you more about that but um, it's it's not required um yeah so what's your experience with that Claire yeah so basically well I, I'm Canadian as well but I uh, I speak French I'm uh, you know I'm uh, uh, completely uh, a French person as well and uh, yes definitely there's no need at all to to speak French I think it's always a good asset if you want to work for instance in the luxury industry uh, for instance Paris is definitely one of the the best capitals to work for that industry so they might help but at HEC a lot of my friends were taking French classes you can also um, you know partner with someone from uh, HEC who wants to learn maybe another language if you're like from a, a Spanish uh, country and you can also uh, develop your skill over the years. So definitely, um, I encourage you if you want to learn French as well to do it. <laughs> Always a great skill. Um, and Claire, I've got a question here for you that's just said, um, what's life like as a digital marketing specialist? Um, what, what does your role entail? Yeah, so basically I'm working, um, so now I'm working at Waze, but I used to be for two years and a half uh, working for big uh, companies. Um, so I would um, come and, and set up the entire digital strategy of uh, uh, big French companies in the tourism industry, in the tech, and, um, in, sorry, in the finance industry and so on. So you identify the, the business objectives of, um, of the company, you actually translate that into how we're going to launch a campaign on on YouTube, on search, on this place, on the different uh, Google products. Uh, you have a lot of market studies as well, because as you know, Google, we also have uh, access to uh, invaluable insights, I would say, about the, the market, the queries, and so on. So yeah, it's a, it's a lot. I would say I was working with 15 different clients from different sectors. So you're never bored. Uh, we're also working a lot with uh, machine learning and AI. So that was really interesting. That was a side project of mine. Um, so it's quite busy. Uh, you interact a lot with clients you have a lot of analysis as well because you need to to work on data to provide insights uh but yeah it's uh it's very interesting definitely 
Um, and I've just got a question here, which will be for you, Sophie, from someone on LinkedIn. And they've, and they've just said they're interested in applying, but they graduated two years ago and they've since been busy working and studying short courses, trying to gain more knowledge and skills. They mm -hmm. asked, will that be detrimental to that application? I assume they mean the fact that they, they graduated two years ago. And mm -hmm. Yeah, in terms of eligibility. So it's good to keep in mind that the master in management is what we call a pre-experienced master's program. So um, it's basically meant for those who have between zero to three years of professional work experience uh, post bachelor's graduation or post your most recent degree. So basically, I think if you graduated in uh, May 2018, you're still eligible to apply um, to start in September 2022. But the people who really gain the most from this master in management is uh, our pre-experience profiles. Great, thank you. And then I've got another question here, um, which will be for you, Sophie, that are, someone's just asked, how can they choose, how do they choose between a specialized master's program or a more a general master in management? Um, yeah, it really uh, just completely depends on you. Some students are have done a bachelor's and they feel like they've gained enough of a base knowledge in business and they really just want a one year kind of intensive program in a sector that they know they want to work in. So they'll do uh, uh, MSc International Finance Program, for example, because they really know they want to work in M&A, for example. Um, other people are like, you know, I've done internships in finance. I like it. But I'm, you know, I also really like being a student and I want to be able to uh, continue to take maybe company law classes and certain marketing classes or even kind of dip my toes in the data science pool. Um, and the master in management just gives you a little bit more time to continue exploring and transition you towards the professional world, but in a, a, a slightly slower paced transition, uh, which gives you just a little bit more time to define your goals, whereas those, um, those specialized master's programs are really for people who are pretty sure of what industry they want to work in, even though, you know, certain specialized masters do, you know, open um, wider doors. I know students who have done the finance program and end up working in consulting, but, you know, they, they knew they wanted to develop their finance skills. Great, thank you. And then a question here, someone um, is asking on YouTube about GMAT and they're saying, is it possible to send the GMAT report after applying for a specific phase? But having the score, for example, if we do the GMAT previously, but shorter than 20 days before the application. Yeah, of course. So basically, the only condition is that you have to have taken the GMAT or the GRE before the application deadline. So if you've taken it like two days before, no problem. Send us your unofficial uh, GMAT score report and then send us the official one as soon as it's ready. But you, um, you're you basically just waiting for your writing score so you can put zero in that section and then just send us the official score report after. As long as you take the exam before the deadline, you're totally fine to apply. Amazing, thank you. And then Claire, I've got a question here for you. And someone's asked, what made you choose Google to work for out of, out of all the tech companies that there are out there? Yeah, very good question. So to be honest, uh, it's actually Google who contacted me regarding a, a, a position. And I thought it was really interesting to apply the e-commerce and digital marketing skills I had gained in, in New York City. Uh, they were offering me an international environment. I first started in Google Dublin before moving to Paris this year. Um, so I like the fact I was working in a uh, in a, in a very diverse team. Uh, it's a team with about 30 different countries represented and I was representing uh, France. So, and, and it was keeping me as well working on the French market. So I thought it was a good transition towards then going back uh, to the French market. I think that the, the values of Google are so, you know, quite aligned with myself. It's very entrepreneurial. Uh, as I told you, I've been working on side projects about machine learning, even though I didn't know uh, anything about it. I was able to contact some company, uh, some, uh, um, sorry, some colleagues in Japan who are working on an innovative solution and, and work closely with them. So they give you a lot of room, I would say, to develop yourself. Um, they train you a lot. Um, and also they give you opportunities to work all around the world uh, later on. You can start, you know, as a digital marketing strategist and then involved in being a YouTube specialist and then involved into being an industry manager for the luxury sector. It's just a matter of you, how you want to set up uh, your own career and making sure that you develop the, the competencies and the skills, but they offer you everything to actually be able to achieve the career you want. So that's why I really chose that company.
Great, thank you, Claire. And I actually have another question here that's coming um, for you, Claire, that's asked, um, were you able to gain exposure to um, tech companies or other other similar companies during your HEC Paris degree? Yes, definitely. So throughout career events, you meet a lot of uh, people who are working in those companies. Uh, you also have through the SEMS, I did the SEMS program, so um, with the ESADE. And uh, with the SEMS program, we do have a lot of, uh, um, you know, either HEC alumni or SEMSIs who were uh, working in Facebook, um, Amazon, uh, Twitter, and so on. So they also uh, reach out to you to make you discover the company. There are sometimes some trips that are organized within uh, the headquarters as well so you get a lot of exposure you get to also be able to talk to people who actually work there do different uh have different job positions so definitely if you want to work in tech uh you know you should not hesitate great thank you um, and then sophie i've got a question here that's asked um what are some lesser known or less traditional career routes that um, mass and management grads are suitable for yeah, um, that's a really good question. And we're noticing a, a trend towards uh, less. I mean, you know, we talked about salary and that's a totally normal question to ask, but we're actually kind of noticing students uh, value kind of the purpose of their job, their future career over salary. Of course, it's something that stays important because you have to sometimes pay off student loans and everything. But uh, we're looking at students who are going kind of towards um well, food tech is really interesting and, and developing right now. We're looking at students going into certain more into government positions um, because they feel like that's where they can uh, make a difference and kind of bring in some business knowledge. And then also um, the other sector is uh, impact. Uh, you know, we're talking about impact investing uh companies like maybe creating their own social startups. So things that really have more of a um, yeah, a, a real mission and a real impact associated to the jobs that they're doing. So those are kind of lesser known, but of course now don't seem so lesser known because more and more people are talking about those industries. Yeah, definitely. Um, and Claire, someone's just asked, what made you select HEC Paris for your master in management? What do you think you should look out for when choosing a program? Yeah, I think you should definitely um, look at, at the first of all, the, you know, the courses that they offer, because it's very important. That's what also is going to give you the skills uh, for your future career. Uh, the fact that you have a lot of electives at HEC is really nice as well, because you can definitely deep dive into some other subjects that are not uh, mandatory that you may be passionate about or you want to discover. Um, second of all, um, for me, what was really important is, was to have an international business career and HEC was was offering me the possibility of having either uh, a SEMS degree in addition to the HEC Paris degree or even a double degree program. And it's one of the few, I would say, uh, master in management around the world that gives access to such an amazing network uh, as well uh, of uh, schools. Um, I really liked the fact that um, as well, I was able to work for one year uh, in, during the gap year. Uh, that enabled me to really discover that I liked you know, marketing, that I really wanted to pursue that in the future. And I think that a lot of masters do not offer that opportunity. So it's really important as well. And definitely, I mean, you know, I'm, I went twice to HEC. So definitely that means I really loved it. Uh, I think that the people there are brilliant. And as I said before, they're from so many different backgrounds. And that's why you actually gain lifelong friends, but as well, you know, an amazing network. And I think that's really important in the long run. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then I've got a question here um, coming from someone on YouTube who said, so this will probably be a question for you, Sophie, do you have any advice for people applying for the Master in Management um, when it comes to essays, for example, how, how any top tips for standing out? Mm -hmm. uh, well, we know that students are applying in, in English and so we're less concerned about, um, you know, the form and more about the content of what you're saying. So make sure that your content is clear, that it's concise, and that you are being your authentic self. I know that that seems like very basic advice, but honestly, it's the best advice we can give because 
Uh, you want to be able to go into that interview saying, you know what, everything I put in my application, I'm going to be able to talk about for 25 minutes and I'm going to be able to talk about it clearly and uh, purposefully. So that's really something that's important because your application is more the evaluation of your technical skills. And then this interview is really where we can evaluate your soft skills. So you want to get to that phase of the, the application process and it's important to be able to really uh, you'll you'll speak with more impact if you're speaking about what you know rather than what you think we want to hear. And to really not uh, auto censor yourself, you know, it's worth it to apply because you really never know. And we're looking for diverse profiles and you might be that diverse profile we're looking for. So go for it. <laughs> Great. Thank you. And then I think just to end it, I'd just like to ask you, Claire, is there anything that you felt like may helped make you stand out as someone who's been through the application process? Well, I think that as uh, Sophie mentioned, honesty is really, you know, the, the most important. Um, you know, back then, I remember that I wanted to mostly work for the luxury industry. And that's what I felt uh, by going to HEC that I would access um, to specific classes, you know, about uh, luxury brand management and, and being able to also have internships there. So I explained my, I would say, professional project uh, without knowing that later on I would involve. But at that time, that was what was kind of, uh, you know, motivating me and uh, I was really being honest about I, what, what I wanted and I think that uh, that's the best way to, to actually uh, um, have access to the master in management is just to explain why you want to go to HEC, how it would help you in the future and uh, what you can you know definitely also bring to the school. Great, thank you so much for both of you. Um, so I think that's going to be a wrap. Thank you again for both of you for joining me today. Thank you so much for all our audience asking all your great questions. Um, in case anyone missed anything, you'll be able to access a recording of this link across Facebook, LinkedIn and YouTube. Um, and remember that you can also download our free Master in Management guide, um, which contains everything you need to know about applying to Master in Management programmes. Um, and you'll find a link to the guide in the event description. Um, also check out our website, www.businessbecause.com, where you can read more about business school news and get practical resources to help you with your application. Um, and also remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, you can find us at youtube.com slash businessbecause, um, where you'll be able to watch exclusive interviews with business school alumni, working at top companies and more. So thank you to all the audience and thank you again to our wonderful panelists. Thank you. Bye, Bye. everyone. Thank you. Right. Is that okay? Perfect.